Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Monday the 19th of June 2017. So on Friday, as I warned about the British pound, it could trade sideways. And that is precisely what it did. You can see here the market uh, didn't know what to do. It was traded sideways and it stayed like this for all of the session, more or less, apart from a couple of news items. I'll move that back a bit. I don't want to go into the Dow just yet. And this is the way it uh, remained. There was uh, just the one trade on the pound. It did eventually move higher. Now that was in ETX. In core spreads, the picture was slightly different. There were two losing trades. But as I warned on Friday, there was no major news to move the market. May is still in place and therefore it could be sideways. And that is precisely what happened. And if we look at the pound daily chart, you can see exactly this uh, sideways move for Friday where prices uh, were just in a very very narrow range so again uh, heed the warnings when they're given because uh, it's uh, you know you can you can get a feel for how a market actually is and how it actually trades and what news is going to move it the next thing we want is to, to move the market really is uh, May to clear off and it's probably getting closer by the day uh, for that as well. She's coming under fire over a lot of things at the moment. It's not just the election or the failed election, but also the way she uh, dealt with uh, the appalling fire in London in uh, Grenfell as well. So interesting uh, times there uh, as far as the pound's concerned. And of course, uh, the way the uh, election, the outcome of that, and the only way to solve it is possibly to uh, have another general election. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see that heading in towards uh, the autumn uh, because the whole thing, uh, frankly, is a dog's breakfast. So moving on to the Dow, we see the market moving lower, goes down to the scalp. And as I've also said in the market alert on Friday, the pattern at the moment is move the market lower and then bring it back. So this is exactly what we saw. The market was uh, brought back and then uh, by late afternoon I sent out a note as uh, well actually early evening saying that the market is sideways and uh, I was going to call it a day. It was just around this time and it was uh, the right call as well because uh, we had a couple of trades and I'm uh, oh, sorry a losing trade on this one and I think there was a couple on uh, core spreads so again you know it's uh, years of sitting and watching this stuff and you know how it's going to sort of uh, play out uh, the volatility in the evening will pick up when it picks up in the main part of the session and actually follows through but at the moment you can see it's just the first uh, couple of hours and that's fine if you make the points in the first couple of hours then just uh, leave well alone that's part and parcel of uh, uh, the discipline on the reloaded chart I know I'd seen a couple of uh, losing trades uh, which were there but of course in the real-time chart which you just saw there was just the one so yet again the insanity continues the Dow continues uh, to move higher we've got uh, a new all-time high in place for Friday let's just remove uh, the previous one so the Dow's new all-time high is 21,407 Probably looking at uh, 21,500 for this market as the next upside target, and maybe that's enough to uh, create the tipping point. Uh, but who knows? The madness continues. Let's have a quick look at uh, the implied volatility. This uh, moving lower as the Dow put in a new all time high from 8.73 to 8.10 during Friday session. So again, back to the lows. Still st uh, stuck in this uh, sideways range. And uh, again, uh, I'd expect this uh, to continue as well. Uh, let's have a, a look, see what news we've got out this week. And starting off with uh, Monday, we've got uh, Dudley speaking, but not until 1 p.m. before the Dow opens. Nothing in the morning to move the pound. Keep that in mind. Uh, Tuesday, we've got uh, a lot of central bank activity here. We've got the FOMC, Evans, Carney, Fisher current account and then Kaplan speaking so Tuesday a lot of uh, central bankers coming out and uh, speaking there 
Wednesday, we've got uh, public sector net borrowing for the UK, uh, medium impact news item there. Uh, also, uh, Andy Aldane is going to be speaking. He wants to remove cash out of the system completely. And also on Wednesday, we've got uh, crude oil inventories as well. Thursday is the usual weekly unemployment claims for the US. And then we've got, uh, again, uh, in the evening, another uh, Forbes MPC UK, obviously, and then the Eurozone and existing home sales. So it's going to be an interesting week. They seem to be wheeling out the old uh, central bankers again, or the uh, some of the lesser mortals that work in the central banks there. Now, one other thing I want to share with you, I've had quite a few people saying, how do you know? that uh, the markets are likely to have a massive correction later this summer or going into autumn. And one of the great uh, bellwether benchmarks of this is uh, looking at uh, the bonds yield curve. And in, in a nutshell, it's as simple as this. The, in a normal market, the further out interest paid on any bond will be higher than those of the nearby, i.e. three months and uh, two year, one year, etc., etc. Now, this is a great chart, this is, because it saves me having to put it all together. But if we go back to uh, uh, 2000, I'll just get the chart there. So let me just let me just start off here. You can see we've got a normal curve here. The nearby, the three month, two year, five year, seven year, is lower, and the, the line's moving up. So that's a normal, a normal curve. But you can see just before the 2000 and uh, collapse there you can see it's inverted and we have this flattening of the yield curve in 2007 uh, all the way through here you can see the yield curve and then eventually as we approach the peak we see the flattening of the yield curve and an inversion of the yield curve so we then go through the last nine years you can see the yield curve is normal normal and then as we reach uh, this point here, at the beginning of 16, working our way through and to the current, if you'll see there, you can see that the line is starting to lift off in the three month there and starting to uh, flatten out. And it'll be interesting to see how uh, this pans out because uh, it could be a very good indicator of uh, what's to come because on the previous two uh, big uh, market corrections and crashes there, the yield curve became inverted and uh, you can see this for yourself at stockcharts.com uh, free charts yield curve dot php but uh, certainly well worth uh, looking at something very strange going on in the bond market at the moment and I know that uh, obviously this also relates to the fact that the US have been increasing interest rates but uh, fascinating to see that we've got uh, this uh, so-called flattening of uh, the yield curve you can see there it's uh, starting to uh, move up in the nearby treasuries there. Right, that uh, will do it for today. We'll come back and look at this uh, periodically, but uh, I just thought I'd share that with you, another piece in the jigsaw, the lows in the implied volatility, etc. And also the amount of news that's starting to make it to the mainstream as well. Everybody knows that we are living in the most uh, huge, well, the biggest bubble, debt bubble in uh, history at uh, this time. So. Uh, Watch this space and let's see how things uh, pan out. We could just do with a, a bit of an increase in the volatility across the board uh, to get things uh, moving a bit. Right, that's it uh, for today. I will uh, report in on Monday if there's anything to report. But uh, for this Sunday, that's it. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend and the sunshine. And uh, I'll report in on Monday if there's anything to report on. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.